We're excited to bring to you our worship service today. You'll be able to watch some praise and worship. And so just join with us in worshiping the Lord and then you'll learn from God's word the principles that are gonna transform your life. So sit back and enjoy the blessings that God has for you today. We're looking down at the earth and the beauty of the world that God created. You're a part of that. Now we're gonna sing holy is the Lord, amen. Somebody's got to say glory. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. I like that glory to God. Amen. That's what they said when the Messiah was coming in the world. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. So we also say glory to God. Turn over with me to Matthew chapter 25. And let's start there in God's word as we look at uh, verse 35 after Jesus speaking to the scribes and the Pharisees and, and the religious leaders of that day. Speaking said, for I was hungry and you gave me, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. The righteous will answer him, Lord, did, when did we see you hungry and feed you and thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go and visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these my brethren, you did it unto me. So there will be some that when it comes to the end of the age, he will be able to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. There will be some that will be like these who were here that were following the light of God and were reaching out and operating in a spirit of loving kindness and tender mercies and bringing healing and blessing into people's lives. And he said, those who have seen the sick and went to be with them, those are the ones who represent me. You see, I think about someone that we've all probably heard about, Mother Teresa, how she was in Calcutta, India, how she was caring for those who were dying who didn't have any money. I think about the hospice that, come, that came in and started as a ministry and people did it out of their heart and now fortunately it is a part of our system so that people are able to have love and understanding and surrounded by loving and caring people who come in oh I want you to know those are the ones who represent the Lord Jesus Christ you say well pastor but what if they are a certain denomination it doesn't matter the name of the denomination it doesn't matter if you're in any denomination 
transformation. What matters is that you've been touched by the power of the Holy Spirit and been transformed into a person that is able to reach out and to operate in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love and joy and peace and goodness and kindness and meekness and temperance and faithfulness. Against such there is no law. How many of you know that whenever you know Jesus Christ, you become his representative? Amen. You see, if I was an ambassador to Spain and I came over to the Spanish and I said, hey, the president said, if you don't do this, then this is the consequences. Then how many of you know I wouldn't be speaking on my behalf? I'm speaking for the United States of America. You see, when I go to minister to somebody, glory to God, I don't just have my authority. I have the authority of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I have all the resources of Jesus Christ. And so when I go in, I can bring healing and blessing and anointing. I can go into a situation and I can bring peace in the midst of the storm. And you can too because the same Holy Spirit that's in me is inside of you. And sometimes the Lord will say, just lay your hand upon their shoulder or upon their forehead and pray a prayer over them and let the anointing of God go into them and infuse them with God's mighty power I want you to know today Jesus said these will be the sheep on the judgment day amen you know we live in a world they say let's have tolerance for each other Jesus goes beyond tolerance and he says love your neighbor as yourself he didn't say if they act like you do he didn't say if they look like you he didn't say if they say have the same moral code as you. Amen. He said to love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Oh, you see, the heart of Jesus is to help those who are in need. You know, I think about sometimes women who get pregnant and they don't know what to do because they don't have the resources and some of them think about their options. And, and isn't it great when there's a brother or sister in Christ says, hey, we want to help you during this time. We want to stand with you so that you can have that baby. And then if she says, well, I'm not ready to be a parent, so we'll help you get in touch with someone who will give you that baby a loving home. And give that baby an opportunity. Isn't it a wonderful thing, that spirit of loving kindness that goes in and touches the heart of people? You know, we just saw a movie called God's Not Dead, and it dealt with people's intellectual questions. And I think people sometimes have intellectual questions, and it was an excellent presentation along those lines. And, you know, it showed a college professor and all the arguments of, of, of those who have said that there is no God. But then it showed the reality of the cosmic power of the universe who spoke and said, Let there be light, and there was light. And morning and the evening were the first day. How many of you know? there is a God who created you after his own likeness for his honor and for his glory now and forevermore. I want you to know God's not through with you yet. God's working on you. Amen. And me. He's working on all of us. We are part of the body of Christ. So Jesus said, these are the ones that I want you to minister to. Those who are going through struggles, I want you to lift them up. Oh, praise God. Aren't you glad you come to a church where you get lifted up? Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says when we come together, let it be for the edification of the church. Amen. So you see, when we come together, we get built up. We get strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So if you are struggling with something today, you come to the house of God. You've come to the right place. We're, we're not going to look down upon you because of your struggles. What we're going to do is say, hey, we're here to lift you up. Aren't you glad he lifted you up? Aren't you glad he blessed you? Aren't you glad he anointed you? And now you can go to somebody who needs the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives and give them an uplift. Jesus said, when you've done it to the least of these my brethren and sisters, aren't you glad you got brothers and sisters in Christ? He said, when you've done it for them, you've done it for me. Amen. You know, in this movie, it also showed a little girl, a teenage girl, and, uh, or maybe 19, and she was kicked out of her home because she came to faith in Christ. And and you know, she went to the church. She had received Christ. 
And as she came to the church, you know, I was just thinking, well, where did, where did she go to live? Her dad kicked her out of her house. Where did she go to live? You know what? We're here to help people, aren't we? And I thought about how God causes us to open our hearts to people. And, and of course, we have to use wisdom. We have to use understanding from God. But when God, God gives us opportunity to help somebody restart their life sometimes. You know, isn't it great that God puts people on your path to light the way? Aren't you glad that you're not in this world by yourself, but God said, I put some people along the way to point you in the right direction? Oh, praise God. He makes everything glorious. Aren't you glad that he made everything glorious to reflect his glory and his honor and his praise? Oh, praise God. I want you to know today the Lord is speaking to your spirit, and he's saying, I put that in you, that healing ministry, that ministry of love and compassion. You know what? You can try to argue somebody into, into receiving Christ and you can try to, to, to talk to your blue in the face, but an act of kindness will open the door. An act of kindness will break down the barriers. And in your home, an act of kindness will break down the barriers. Oh, praise the Lord. Aren't you glad today that God's spirit wells up in you and love comes out of your spirit? Oh, praise God. I want you to know God will put you in the place where you can go to somebody who's been beaten down, somebody who's been through the mill, somebody who feels like they haven't got any hope and hope will rise up. Aren't you glad today that hope rises up? Aren't you glad today that something rises up with in you and says there is a God who loves me and a God who is there to help me on the journey. Amen. Amen. See, I've got to get help from God before I can give somebody else help from God. Amen. Amen. You see, he does something in my life and then I can share it with somebody else. Praise God. You know, God, God is in the process of doing something in your life right now. You're here today. Some of you have had some attacks in your life but you know what you're surrounded by God's army there's the angels of God and there are the people of God who surround you and say we are covering you we are your covering we're in covenant with you hallelujah I want you to know today God is putting prayer partners into your life people who are willing to pray with you so that you know that, they, that when you're coming up against an attack, that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And the intercessory prayer is going to break through in your life at the very moment you need it. Aren't you glad today to know that God has put somebody out there to pray for you? I want you to know how much I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate how you've prayed, how you've sought God about this ministry here at Souls Harbor. Because you see, it's a part, we're all a part of God's team. Aren't you glad that you have a part to play in God's program? Amen. You see, God says, I'm going to put you with you, and I'm going to put you with you, and you're going to go out and minister together for the glory of God. I want you to know that right now, God said he went, sent them out two by two. So that's why prayer partners are important, because as we gather together, I want you to know then we together are stronger. God has put the church together. He said, there are going to be people in hard places, but God's going to send you by. Hallelujah. I want you to know he'll send you by to spark a light into somebody who's lost all hope. Hallelujah. And when God sends you by, I want you to know they're going to be able to get in connection. How many of you got a connection today? Amen. I got a connection. Hallelujah. You see, I know in whom I have believed. And I'm convinced he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know in whom I have believed, and I know him personally. When I understand him and I know him, then I can express him. Hallelujah. How can you express someone who you don't know? You've got to know him. But I want you to know the disciples tried to, tried to cast out demons of affliction that were afflicting somebody, and they couldn't do it. And Jesus said, they, they came to him, and they said, why can't we do it? He said, this kind goeth not but 
but by prayer and fasting. He said, I'm in contact with the Father, and that's why when I come, those who need to be delivered will be delivered. I want you to know today you are marching in the authority of God when you spend time with God. Amen. When you spend time with God, hallelujah, conversation with God. Oh, praise God. Aren't you glad you can wake up in the morning and talk to him? I've been talking to him many, many years. Throughout my day, I have a conversation with him. I talk to him, and he puts me right where I need to be in just the moment I need to be there. And you know what? As we're giving out, we need to take in ministry too because you see the Holy Spirit calls us away sometimes and says, now I'm going to pour into you. Hallelujah. I want you to know when God begins to pour into you, then uh, like, like Randy was talking about today, if there is any junk in there, and then it begins to get out. Hallelujah. How many of you know that you want God's word in you so that he can do a cleansing work inside of you and that you can become a vessel of honor to the glory of God. You see, God was speaking to these people and he said, I was in this point of need and you came. And they said, Lord, we never saw you in that point. But he said, you've seen other people who needed that and you ministered to them. Those were the sheep. Of course, there was also some goats, wasn't there? You know, there's some goats out there. They claimed to know him, but they didn't. He said, then I'll say, depart from me, because you didn't know me. You claimed to know me. You did all the religious things that you were supposed to do in, in terms of rituals. But he said, you did not express the love of God. He said, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and he that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is what? Love. So if I've got the fruit of the Spirit, I'm going to act and operate in a loving way. Amen. And you say, well, preacher, sometimes I just get fed up. Nobody here has ever said that. You might get fed up, but God, call upon God's resources. Mighty are the resources of the Lord. The Lord is a refuge of very present help in the time of need. And I thought about that little girl in the movie last night who had nowhere to go. And I thought, Lord, you're her refuge. You're her strength. You know, I also thought about over in Iraq, we know about ISIS and how that I heard one of the pastors talking about how that they've come in and they, they've taken away the, the banks, all the money in the bank, their houses. They said, either get out or you're dead. And so they went to the other country and other people and other Christians embraced them and said come we'll be your refuge I want you to know it doesn't matter what the enemy brings against you God has people around that will be the light who will be the refuge who will be the strength who will bring deliverance who will bring abundance who will bring blessings into your life I want you to know what Satan meant for evil God can turn to good Joseph found himself down in the pit rejected by his brothers and it looked pretty bleak down in the pit but I want you to know that when it wasn't where he stayed was it glory to God God raised him out of the pit and then put him over in Potiphar's house he got into Potiphar's house and then he got falsely accused of something he didn't do and so he wound up in jail for something he did not do is life always fair it's not always fair he was doing everything right but he wound up in jail Jesus said I was in prison. You came to see me. Hallelujah. You know, I, I went to see a guy in prison. He had a DUI, or it was jail. You can call it whatever you want, but it ain't a good place. Amen? Prison, jail. I know one guy, he, he, he went out. He, he had to spend about two years in, in the white-collar uh, area, and he called it camp. He said, I'm heading to camp. I'll be back in a couple years. Amen. That's a positive attitude. <laughs> Amen. But you see, Jesus said, I will go to where you're at. You see, he goes there through me and through you. He goes to that situation through us. And when we go in, the glory goes in. Because the glory's in us. 
working through us. Hallelujah. I want you to know the level of glory in you is up to you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. How much glory do you have in you today? Amen. How much strength do you have in you today? God's saying, I want to give you more. Hallelujah. I want you to know God's saying, today I have more for you. Praise God, because you see, I understand that I need all I can get. Is there anybody else you want all you can get? Amen, because I need to get filled up because I'm, I'm giving out and you're giving out. But I, I get refilled all the time. Oh, praise God. I'm, oh, praise God. It's a continuous flow when you're in the anointing of God, when you're operating in the Holy Spirit, when you wake up in the morning and you say, thank you, Lord, for that daylight. Hallelujah. I want you to know. Cliff showed me a picture. Uh, uh, up, he was up at 4 or 4.30 in the morning. He said, boy, the moon looks good. And I thought, keep taking pictures. I won't see it any other the way <laughs> glory to God I said thank God for smart palms amen. Amen. amen praise God God made that beautiful moon and I looked up even last night at 1 4 30 it was <laughs> about 8 30 9 o'clock and I thought boy it does look beautiful over that water Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just take a moment. You see, prayer and meditation turns into activation. Whenever you pray and meditate on moments like that, when you're looking at the moon and the water and all these things, you begin to meditate. And then you begin to take more God in. Hallelujah. He makes everything glorious. Just look at his creation. Oh, he made some beautiful things. Now, look in the mirror. He made you. Amen. He makes good stuff, don't he? I, I said he makes good stuff, don't he? Look at your neighbor and say he makes good stuff. He's amazing. I like that, Delroy. He's amazing. He looked over at Victoria and said, he's amazing. He made Victoria. Amen. Oh, Lord. I hear you, brother. Praise God. He makes everything glorious. His creativity, his wonder, his awe. I want you to know, hallelujah, that the Lord is speaking to his people. And he says, this is what I want out of you. I want you to be the kind of people that express my loving kindness to people wherever they're at on the journey. I said, wherever they're at on the journey. You see, Hallelujah. I want everybody to know how much I love them. Even if I don't like what they do, I can still love them because, you see, they have a spirit inside of them. Amen. You see, God can give you wisdom as to how to express your love. You don't, you don't want to get into a situation where you put up with somebody who is abusive because, you see, you are made in the image of God and you don't deserve to be abused and mistreated. But what you need to do is say, God loves you and when you're ready to get on the right course, then you too can find God's strength, God's mighty power. Amen. Hallelujah. God has created you for wonderful life. Your destiny is something great. Don't let the devil try to tear you down and make you think that you've got to be beaten down. Hallelujah. God is the lifter of my head. He's the lifter of your head. You need to rise up in the name of Jesus. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That is you. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. He's raised you up. Hallelujah. And so when you are under attack, I want you to know you've got a family of God that loves you and want to bring you through. And all you got to do is let's work together for the glory of God. Let's stand. When the Lord comes with his. Praise God that you could be with us and share in our worship service. You know, God is wanting to do something marvelous in your life. 
His spirit has been sent so that we can enjoy a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. What you felt today is the Holy Spirit as he's drawing you to Jesus. Right now is an opportunity to receive him as your Lord and Savior. And so I want to pray with you at this time. If you pray with me this prayer, you can know that you're going to spend all eternity with Christ and with your loved ones that know the Lord. So let us pray. Father God, I thank you for sending Jesus into this world. And Lord, I know that you were willing to give your life for me. And I thank you, Christ, because you poured out your life and now I can be forgiven. I can be set free. I can be delivered. I can be whole in Jesus' name. And I receive your blessing into my life. And I am now on a journey to follow you. I'm committing my life to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And I'm looking to you, Lord, to give me the direction that I need. You are going to be my shepherd. And Lord, I'm going to trust in you to take me from here and one day even into heaven. Thank you for this, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there's nothing more wonderful than when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and you know what it's like to have a personal relationship with God. And once you know Christ, then you understand that he cares about everything that you're going through in your life. And so today I want to take this opportunity to just pray with you, whatever's on your heart right now. Father God, I just pray right now that you'll just minister to the need in this life. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you are reaching out in your love. And Lord, you are embracing my brother or sister in Christ. And Lord, right now, the healing streams from heaven are flowing through them. And Lord, I thank you right now that you're working in their life. And Lord, if they're praying for a family member or a loved one, Lord Jesus, we commit it to you right now. We turn it over to you, Lord, and we know that our prayers are touching the heart of God. And Lord, even though we may not see in the physical, Lord, we know in the spiritual realm that you're ministering to that situation. And Lord, one of these days we'll see the physical manifestation and we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for all you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God for what he's doing in your life. And we're just excited that we can come and bring our broadcast to you. And so, uh, if you don't have a church home, we'd love for you to come out and be with us at the Souls Harbor Church at 451 West Helen Avenue in Punta Gorda, Florida. Come and be a part of our family. When you come in the doors, you're going to feel God's presence. You're going to feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit as we pray and minister to all the needs that are here in the congregation because you know what? Jesus cares about everything that's going on in your life. And so we just want to continue to pray God's richest blessings upon you. And whether it's at Souls Harbor or another church, we just pray that God will richly bless you and draw you closer to him in Jesus' name.